Hi, I'm Park Ranger John Kepke with Government Canyon State Natural Area. As you can tell by the mask, we're recording this during the COVID-19 pandemic. But since my camera operator is going to stay a socially responsible distance away from me, I'm going to go ahead and remove my mask so that it's easier to hear me and understand what I'm saying. I'm standing at the precipice of the overlook, high above the dinosaur tracks, which are just below us. Everything you see behind me to the northeast is part of Government Canyon State Natural Area. From this vantage point, you are able to see both the upper theropod trackway and the lower theropod trackway. To see the upper theropod trackway, it's simply a matter of looking off to the northeast. They're very clear below. The lower theropod trackway, however, is directly below the cliff. And if you're feeling daring and adventurous enough and are willing to get close enough to the edge and peer over very, very carefully, you can actually see them from this vantage point. To get here, we took the overlook trail. From this point, we'll go down to the dinosaur tracks themselves to get a closer look. This is an interpretive panel that uh, tells a little bit about the information that many people ask about at the dinosaur track, but we're going to go to the tracks directly ourselves and see them firsthand. The hike from the trailhead of the Joe Johnston route up here to the dinosaur tracks is approximately two and a half miles each way, making it a five mile round trip. People coming up here should be prepared for at least two to three hours of hiking and bring plenty of water something to protect yourselves from the sun, perhaps a snack. And if you're with small children, you may only be going about one mile an hour. So you do need to plan your time accordingly. I would strongly recommend you plan more time than you think you would need. At the dinosaur tracks, we have a perimeter outlined by these ropes and some signs to provide information to help uh, protect these tracks from damage. For purposes of this video, however, we are going to actually cross over the boundaries so that you can see firsthand and up close what these dinosaur tracks look like. We're currently at the lower theropod trackway. This particular trackway, located in a creek bed, contains about 27 tracks from a theropod. Theropod is a type of dinosaur that had two feet with three toes on each foot and stood upright and was a meat eater. A theropod is a generic term for a dinosaur that fits that description. This particular type of dinosaur we believe to have been an Acrocanthosaurus. These tracks would have been put down somewhere during the Cretaceous period, approximately 110 to 111 million years ago. They've been preserved here uh, as a result of geologic processes, uh, not too dissimilar from dog tracks on a sidewalk. If you're familiar with that, you know that uh, when a sidewalk gets poured, it's sort of a limestoney material that as it dries, it hardens into rock. And while that drying process is going on, if a dog or another animal were to scamper across it, leaving their footprints in that sidewalk material, if allowed to dry, those prints will stay there forever. In a not too dissimilar way, we have our dinosaur tracks. This area during the Cretaceous period would have been a beach, much like the Gulf of Mexico, except instead of the type of sand that we associate with the beach, it would have been more of a limestoney type of slurry, a combination of mud and limestone, decomposed shell material, the type of uh, thing that would, like a sidewalk, solidify into rock if allowed to dry long enough in the sun. Despite however many times um, erosion processes might cover them over with new material or ocean, ocean might cover it, um, just as a sidewalk with dog tracks in it would, uh, you can cover it up and clean it off and cover it up and clean it up and as long as it isn't broken up or, or damaged or chipped away, they will stay there. 
and that's a reason why we ask our visitors to stay behind the perimeter. As I mentioned, these are theropod tracks. The three toes, two legs, eats meat. You can clearly see the three toes here, as well as the heel strike right there. If you look very carefully, you can also see imprints from the claws that would have been at the end of each toe. These particular toes actually go well underneath and extend underneath the surface of the rock here. If you look carefully too, you'll notice that around the perimeter of the track, we have some mounding or a ridge, sometimes referred to as an impact ridge or an impact mound. That's an indicator to us that while we may have depressions within this rock formation that may not look exactly like a track, they may in fact be tracks based on the impact and the ridge that's formed as the animal stepped into the muck, it squished out, forming a ridge around it, and thereby outlining where the print might be. We'll show you some examples of that a little bit later. Most of the tracks at Government Canyon State Natural Area are not complete tracks like the one you just saw. Many of them are just partial tracks. For example, they might be a heel strike or the side of a foot. In this case, we have a single toe. Once again, we see the impact rim or ridge around where the print was made. We see a clear delineation of a toe with a claw mark at the end, at the top end of it. We have two types of dinosaur tracks here at Government Canyon State Natural Area. We have theropod tracks, which we've just seen, and sauropod tracks. We're going to, we're going to go look at those sauropod tracks now. <laughs> now standing at the sauropod trackway. This is a trackway that was created during the same Cretaceous period, only it is much younger than the theropods. We know it's younger because it's up, raised up higher, which gives it a completely different timeline geologically. These are tracks from a single animal. The sauropods are uh, an, a type of animal that have four legs, round feet, and is plant eating common type of sauropod that many people know of would be a brontosaurus. The particular sauropod that left these tracks we believe to be a sauroposeidon. We have 19 tracks from a single individual. It's moving from that way towards the camera and we see clear delineations of both the rear legs and the front legs. The rear legs being much larger, the front legs being much smaller. This particular animal we believe to have been a juvenile based on the stride, which can be determined by measuring the lengths between left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. Those me measurements indicate to us that this animal would have only been about 55 feet long. While that may sound very long, it is actually about half as long as an adult animal of the same type of species would have been. Let's take a closer look at the tracks. Here is a a footprint from the rear foot of the Sora Poseidon. Again, if we look carefully, we can see the impact ridge that encircles the track. We see the imprint from the tr track itself, delineating the front toe area, tapering back to the heel. This is the largest track we have at Government Canyon State Natural Area. Between all of the, the tracks, whether they're thoropods or sauropods, this one is the largest. If you look down here, you can see a series of impact rims or ridges that outline the different tracks from the animal. For many years, we didn't know anything about these tracks at all. It was through a collaboration with the Witte Museum and specifically their uh, curator of paleontology, Dr. Thomas Adams, that we were able to learn what we know about these tracks. These videos are not intended to answer all questions and provide all the information that we have about these tracks. If you would like to learn more, please visit the Witte Museum or come see us at Government Canyon State Natural Area and ask for one of our interpretive brochures that tells more about the dinosaur tracks. Uh, once again, from the dinosaur tracks at Government Canyon State Natural Area, I'm Park Ranger John Kepke, and we'll see you next time.